When the subject of evolution, or the Big Bang, comes up anywhere near creationist, you must quickly get out your poo shield because the shit's about to start flinging. They'll call it nonsense and ridicule the ideas in a tone that you would expect if you suggested that the world was flat after all. Ha! The Big Bang is stupid. Science is wrong all the time. Blah, blah, blah. The most important question to ask them is something along the lines of, please explain your understanding of the Big Bang, or please explain your understanding of evolution. I have never come across a young Earth creationist that had an accurate knowledge of either theory. You can't criticize something if you don't know what you're criticizing. My personal theory on why we never hear from young Earth creationists who are informed about evolution and the Big Bang is that those creationists who really went and studied the facts to actually learn what it's all about were convinced by the simple truth of it and are no longer staunch young Earth creationists. Or at least, they learned that they need better arguments, and they couldn't find any, so they became less vocal. One quick note for clarity. The Big Bang and evolution are two separate and distinct theories that don't rely on one another to be true themselves. You can accept evolution and not the Big Bang, and I say accept because it's not about belief, but acceptance of plain facts. The leading theory before our current Big Bang model was that the universe was cyclical, expanding from a singularity and then collapsing under the influence of gravity to start the whole system over again. This was a slick theory that answered the question of where the universe came from. It was a simple, elegant answer. The universe was always here, cycling on and on into infinity. If, as many uninformed people claim, that science is just making things up and sticking to theories because of ideology or hatred of God, why would science give up such a convenient theory that wrapped everything up in a nice bow in favor of some nebulous one-time Big Bang that will expand and dissipate a one-time deal? All of the questions that were answered by the previous theory would have to be faced again. Why is there something rather than nothing? If the universe doesn't cycle, then where'd it come from? It seems implausible that it would appear out of nothing. Until the early 20th century, galaxies were commonly known as spiral nebulae and mostly thought to be as close to Earth as other nebulae. This point was debated for almost two centuries, until Edwin Hubble and others laid it to rest. The scale of the universe was starting to come into focus. Hubble then made one of the most important discoveries in astronomy, redshifts. Here I read from the June 14, 2012 issue of Nature. Quote, A central observation in astronomy is that distant galaxies are moving away from us, and from each other, with a speed that is proportional to their distance from Earth. In other words, the farther away they are, the faster they are moving. Because the speeds of galaxies can be measured from the Doppler effect, which shifts the galaxy's light to the red end of the electromagnetic spectrum, their distances can be determined using the constant of proportionality between speed and distance, known as the Hubble constant. This central observation, called Hubble's Law, is crucial evidence for the now accepted view that the universe originated in a Big Bang as a tiny, unimaginably dense entity that has been expanding ever since. What's more, it provides astronomers with a neat way of determining the distances to objects, which would otherwise be impossible using only the object's observed positions in the sky. Unquote. The use of redshift analysis allows astronomers to gather three-dimensional data from only one viewing direction. I received this message from another YouTube user the other day in regards to my question to him as to why, if a god created everything, did he make it look so old? He said, Quote, as for age, it seems strata dating, radioactive dating, and redshift of light from stars all have assumptions that may not be true. Unquote. The thing is, he's exactly right about assumptions that may not be true, but the mistake is using that position as a conclusion. It should not be the end point of inquiry, but the beginning. What underpins these assumptions? What logical conclusions were used in their formation? What facts were used to build the theory? Another common criticism of the Big Bang is the misunderstanding that it claims that something came from nothing. That is not what the theory states at all. There is no such thing as nothing. What we call empty space is a boiling, bubbling mess of subatomic particles popping into and out of existence according to the laws of quantum mechanics. What the theory actually states is that something came from the quantum fluctuations in empty space. That is far from nothing. Which brings me to the point. The science journal Nature for the 14th of June 2012 ran an article in a corresponding study titled Reconstructing the Third Dimension and Big Bang Tomography as a New Route to Atomic Resolution Electron Tomography. Now, I'm not a scientist and I don't pretend to understand everything in the article, but what they are saying here is that they are directly importing the scientific methods of Big Bang cosmology 
and applying them to scanning electron microscopy in order to determine the three-dimensional positions of atoms from images taken from a single viewing angle. And it works. This is a stunning validation of the science that underpins our understanding of the universe at large, and more directly the science that lies at the heart of Big Bang cosmology. How do we know that the assumptions that underlie the theory are sound? Because they are constantly tested and applied, and now they are applied outside of cosmology and externally validated. One by one, the uninformed criticisms against science made by desperate ideologues are being knocked down before their very eyes. The next time someone tries to tell you that the Big Bang is not science, calmly refer them to these articles in Nature and watch them squirm.